Hello, I'm Larry Fryer, and welcome to Fortville Feeders. Fortville Feeders is the premier parts handling and feeding system in North America. Fortville Feeders was launched by Michael Krause in 1979, and he started this business in his own garage. We now operate in a 60,000 square foot facility dedicated strictly to parts feeding excellence. Our engineers are expert designers who combine years of parts handling knowledge with the latest technologies. Our toolers are very high skilled craftsmen specializing in parts feeding systems. We have our own in-house machining and milling capabilities including CNC milling, EDM drilling, and water jet direct to print cutting. Now we get into a little bit more of some of the mechanization, and this is really where, where Fortville hangs its hat, and this is where we, uh, we try to really shine as far as mechanisms are concerned. Again, uh, we have the capability with all of our mechanical engineers to get involved with uh, more mechanisms than, than any of our competition is concerned. Um, one of our first examples I'd like to show you is this, uh, this rivet feed system. This is a project we won. Um, and it was truly um, from our concepting, from our project manager, and how we went about the application. The customer needed 14 rivets um, uh, to be an escape and blow to a receiver for the customer to do an assembly project. Um, our competition came with very large bowls and multiple lines, and uh, um, it was very bulky and uh, a lot of moving parts. We uh, came at it a little bit different. We simplified everything behind the mechanism, so we came with a bulk supply hopper, a very simple bowl feeding the rivet down a single lane track down to a mechanism which was a servo driven star wheel. And you can see we sliced all those rivets off and once we had all 14 sliced off, we escaped and blew all of them at one time to a receiver block. Uh, the customers bought I think three systems since then. But you can see a very small, compact and complete system. There's the drawing package, but I also like to show the photos as well. This was when it was in our, our uh, quality assurance department during runoff. But you can see the tubes, and we, had, uh, we also had um, ring proxies on there showing that the parts did uh, escape and blow and meet their destination through the tubing. Next slide shows an, another star wheel type application. This was a Ford was the end user on this application, and it's a... Um, just a uh, ABB robotics. They needed to pick up these parts in a specific bolt hole circle. Again, very clean, very simple, good application for us. Next application is a, is a cam oriented one to two shuttle. This is for Briggs and Stratton. It's a design that they really like. Um, different than some of our standard cross shuttle type designs, but again, a cam design that, that Briggs and Stratton really specifies and, and likes to uh, have us duplicate for their systems. It's something that their maintenance department prefers. And we also have other various types of mechanism as far as this a simple escapement mechanism here. It's a very simple finger escapement. We're also doing some probing in the ID of this part here to show that there's no tumbling media in there. Uh, the next uh, application shows two flex tubes that we're doing a single bowl with a one to two shuttle and escape and blowing uh, the parts through some extruded tubing. The next application is a cross shuttle mechanism and you can see it's uh, for various parts so there's a changeover required for this part with no tools required to do the changeover so there's thumb screws to change the cross shuttle mechanism to flip it around to uh, the second part that we're feeding and uh, again no use of tools in order to do that. The next slide shows a Venturi type application where we're feeding a part out. It goes up to the Venturi and the Venturi blows the part to its destination. Again, another Venturi type application on the next slide. And then this other slide shows a uh, lift and locate mechanism. These parts tended to overlap. There was a bit really bad tolerance on these parts and these parts tended to overlap. And so you can see where we have a part come up to its dead nest here. And you can see the photo eye selecting the part that its part presence is available. The air jet behind the, the part for part number two in line would blow that second part off, relieving any back pressure. And then the mechanism would lift vertically to present the part for robotic pickup. And then we have a couple of packaging type applications where we get involved with uh, various timing screws. And you can see this is just some cutlery applications where we have uh, various forms of timing screws to be able to drop into uh, bagging type applications. 